Good afternoon, dear friends, and welcome to this Holy Mass of Saturday, the 15th week in Ordinary Time. In today's Mass, I will continue to pray for you and pray for your families. Pray for people you hold dear in your heart. Pray and ask for God's special grace and blessing. Today, I will also offer Mass for the repose of the soul of a great American hero, Congressman John Lewis, who passed away today. Pray and ask that God may grant him rest and peace. Also pray for the Reverend C.T. Vivian, who passed away. These are two people who fought for the equality of all people and gave everything fighting for that cause. That God may grant them rest. That God may inspire their voices to keep speaking to our society also want to pray for doctors, nurses, and surgeons, all those who work and care for our sick, that God may bless their ministry at a time of great weeks. I pray for those who have anniversaries or birthdays today. Pray that God may grant you many joyful and happy years to celebrate in the future. We pray for our leaders as they continue to battle this coronavirus around the world, that God may help us come together, listen to each other, and find the best way to address this, this problem. I invite you to bring your intentions just so we can pray together. And our opening hymn today is Holy God, we praise your name. Holy God, we praise your name. Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accountable Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the gospel, and to strive after everything that does it honor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the prophet Micah. Woe to those who plan iniquity and walk out evil on their couches. In the morning, in the morning light, they accomplish it when it lies within their power. They covet fields and seize them, houses, and they take them. They cheat an owner of his house, a man of his inheritance. Therefore says the Lord, Behold, I am planning against this race an evil from which you shall not withdraw your necks nor shall you walk with your head high for it is time it is for it will be a time of evil on that day a satire shall be sung over you and there shall be a plaintive chant our reign is complete 
our fields are portioned out among our captors. The fields of my people are measured out, and no one can get them back. Thus you shall have no one to mark out boundaries by lot in the assembly of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, do not forget the poor, O Lord. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. Why, O Lord, do you stand aloof? Why hide in times of distress? Proudly, the wicked harass the afflicted who are caught in the devices the wicked have contrived. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. For the wicked man glories in his greed. And the covetous blasphemes, said the Lord at not. The wicked man boasts, he will not avenge it. There is no God, sons of his thoughts. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. His mouth is full of cursing, guile and deceit. Under his tongue are mischief and iniquity. He locks in ambush near the villages, in hiding. He mothers the innocent. His eyes spy upon the unfortunate. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. You do see, for you behold misery and sorrow, taking them in your hands. On you the unfortunate man depends. On the fatherless, you are the helper. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. The Pharisees went out and took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. When Jesus realized this, he withdrew from that place. Many people followed him, and he cured them all, but he warned them not to make him known. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through Isaiah the prophet. Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom I delight, I shall place my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not contain or cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, a smoldering wick he will not quench, until he brings justice. He brings justice to victory, and in his name, the Gentiles will find hope. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, uh, today we, as a country, we grieve the passing of two very iconic figures in the human rights or the civil rights movement. Congressman John Lewis and the very Reverend city vivian and we pray that god may grant them rest and that their work of a better union a more civilized country a more humane a more hospitable a more equal and equitable nation may may come to birth that's our prayer we uh, we see ourselves as brothers and sisters under one god and we see ourselves no longer as enemies having to mutually self-destruct, that we will lay aside our divisions and our divisiveness and quit listening to people who seek to divide us instead of to unite us as a people. I hope that day comes where we will see ourselves as a united people, no longer as a divided people in spite of our history of racial tensions and other forms of divisions. That's our hope and that's our prayer. Today, I would like to reflect with you from the Gospel reading. I'm sure you may have heard this 
timing is everything. Now, I don't believe timing is everything, but I believe timing is a whole lot. And it takes my mind back to the preacher, Kohelet, in the book, in the book of Ecclesiastes. And this is what the preacher says. There is time for everything. So, there is time for everything. There is time to be born, time to die, time to laugh, time to, time to cry, time to um, fight, time to hold back. There is the right time. There is a time for everything. And so, timing is very essential, is very key. And you determine your timing. You don't let the circumstances to force you to choose. You stay calm and make the right make make sure you choose the right time because in some cases the enemy the devil or anyone else might force time on you getting you to engage or to involve knowing that that wasn't the right time for you to gain the victory so you must always be in charge of timing there are other factors you don't control but i think you can control your time just think of it you cannot go planting on a win in the winter and expect that whatever grains you plant in the winter, in a very, very cold winter, that that will give you a result. No, they will not. They will all be, be frozen to death. That's not the time to do that. It doesn't matter how hard you work. It doesn't matter what skills you have. It doesn't matter what talent you have. It doesn't matter any other factor unless you find a way to warm that environment but whatever you do will not work. There is time to do that. And in the U.S. back in Africa, for instance, we, we have seasons. There are seasons for planting certain crops. If you plant them at a different time, they don't, they don't grow. It is that simple. So timing is very, very key. Success depends on a lot of other factors, but depends more on timing. There are people who have had a lot of things because they knew the right time to move, they knew the right time to engage, they knew the right, the right time to launch, even in military combat. There is always the right time to launch, to attack. You get all the, gather all the intelligence and wait for the opportune moment, the right time to engage when the enemy is more vulnerable. So timing is important. Don't let anyone drag you into something that you have not prepared for. You be the one choosing when to engage. And if it means you stepping back just to allow yourself time to engage at the right time, do it. In military times, we call it retreat. You don't retreat because you are afraid of the enemy. You retreat because it allows you time to recalibrate your move and launch at the opportune time based on your own choice and your own choosing. So you see what is happening here from the gospel reading. The Pharisees went out and took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. Now, Jesus didn't say, I don't care what their plans are. Of course, he would have said that. And he didn't do this for himself. He did this for us to show us that it's not every time you want to pick up a fight. You pick up a fight when you know you can win or when you know you have the best chance to succeed. So he didn't do this for himself because if, if, about, if for himself, he could call angels to do all of this for him. So you realize, the Bible said, when Jesus realized this, that the Pharisees had taken counsel against him to harm him, when he realized this, he withdrew from that place. He, he, didn't, allow, he didn't allow the Pharisees to set his own timetable on when to engage, on, on, on when to project and present himself. No, he withdrew from that. That wasn't the right time for him to do that. And scripture tells us how wherever he went, many people still came to him. So I want, I want to focus on the right time. There are many people who have died today because they did not realize, they did not make the right judgment on when to call a doctor or to seek medical attention. They waited for too long. And by the time they did it, it was late. 
So there is something such as being too late or being too early, but making sure you choose and you, you pick the right time is very essential. Think about you getting angry maybe because your husband or your wife did something. There is the right time to speak sense to your husband or to your wife. There is also the wrong time to do that where you realize everyone is just maybe so upset and instead of getting a listening ear for someone to hear you out because you're upset and frustrated all you do is you just escalate the other person's anxiety and you realize that there is an open fight with no one winning with nothing being achieved because we just could not hold our own our own frustration and wait for the opportune time when the time pass we're down just so we could speak heart to heart. Think about how many things we have we have destroyed. Think about how many relationships we have wasted and spoiled because we just could not wait for the opportune time. So, so Jesus gives us an opportunity here to learn. There is the right time. So timing is very key. There are times when you call the same person and you speak to them and they listen to you. But there are other times where you call them and all you get is a backlash. It's an angry person. Only because they are dealing with their own frustrations that are unconnected with whatever is happening. So, so don't always lash out at, this, at, at, at the, the nearest opportunity. Take the time and look out for the best time to achieve whatever it is you're looking for. There is such a thing as timing. So we pray, dear friends, today, that God may open the eyes of our minds to recognize the best time, the best time to do whatever it is that we need to do. Whether that's our investments, financial investments, whether that's our emotional investments, whatever it is, whether that's taking care of ourselves, that we may realize when timing is suitable and more appropriate to do it. Because there are times where we have the skills, there are times where we have the finances, the resources, the times where we have the opportunity, we have everything lined up in place. The only factor that wasn't lining up for us was timing. And of course, that normally ultimately leads to a failure. And you begin to question yourself, what did I do right? The one thing you didn't do right, you did not recognize the appropriate time, the right time, when every other factor was in place for you to succeed. So may God help us to recognize when everything else is in place and when we have to make that good judgment for the right time. So always I like to end my reflections by reminding you that God loves you so much and you are the delight of the Almighty God. Let us pray. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. We are included in God's eternal plan. Each of us has been chosen in Christ for some hidden purpose. Our prayerful intentions come before the God who knows and cares for each one of us. That the church will continue to call and send many missionaries to preach the salvation of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people who are depressed or lacking self-respect may learn of God's plan for them and find a grace to follow through those plans. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That mercy may be shown to those who reject God's messengers and the truth they bring. That the Holy Spirit may help them find conversion in their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those seriously sick members of our community, especially those sick with the coronavirus, that they may welcome the sacrament of holy anointing and all other graces that come with spiritual communion for their healing and recovery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Congressman John Lewis, and the Reverend C.T. Vivian, who passed away, that God may grant them rest and that God may bring comfort 
to their families and that God may give voice to the cause and the causes they all fought for and stood for and lived for and died for. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have asked our prayers at this time, that God who knows your needs, that God who knows your struggles and your stresses and stressors, that he may send you, approach, approach, he may apportion for you the appropriate graces needed to meet those needs. We pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries, that God's blessings may be with you today and in many years to come. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have adopted us as children Help us to appreciate your many blessings. And through the prayers of our blessed mother, help us to offer ourselves to you every day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become our bread of life. Blessed be God of life. Blessed are the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when, we cons when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. All the saints everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do for, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, John Lewis, and the Reverend C.T. Vivian, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant to Lord that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may marry to the co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray using the words our Lord gave us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other a sign of God's peace. And from me to you and to all your loved ones, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Grace, prayer for grace to receive spiritual communion. Most gracious and most merciful, most loving and ever compassionate God. Today we lift you high and lift up your name. But today there are so many sons and daughters of yours who are still unable to attend Mass as a result of this current medical and health situation. We ask, O God, that you yourself may bring the grace, may bring the sacrament to them where they are, in their homes and in their families that they may receive the full benefits of spiritual communion. For those who are sick, that they may know healing. For those who are afraid, that they may find courage. For those who are in fear, that they may find hope. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. 
having consumed this gift with prayer and word, that by our participation in this ministry, its saving effect upon us may grow. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sins of the devil. May God rebuke him with humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, stand on all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I take a moment to express my thanks again to you and to the loved ones who have joined us to celebrate and to pray together. Pray that God may bless you, that God may watch over you, that God may show himself and reveal himself so powerfully to you. But above all, that God may give you the, may give you um, the ability to identify and to recognize when the time is right for everything that you do. So always I like to remind you, you remain the delight of the Almighty God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of our blessed mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Immaculate Mary, thy praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. All the all be Ave Maria, Ave Ave Maria, in heaven the blessed thy glory proclaim, and those with thy children invoke your sweet Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, 